Section 11 of Aesop's Fables, a new translation. Written by Aesop, translated by V.S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Rosalind Carlyle. The Farmer and the Stork A farmer set some traps in a field which he had lately sown with corn, in order to catch the cranes which came to pick up the seed. When he returned to look at his traps, he found several cranes caught, and among them a stork, which begged to be let go, and said, You are not to kill me! I'm not a crane, but a stork, as you can easily see by my feathers, and I am the most honest and harmless of birds. But the farmer replied, It's nothing to me what you are. I find you among these cranes who ruin my crops, and like them you shall suffer. The moral of the story is that if you choose bad companions, no one will believe that you are anything but bad yourself. The Charger and the Miller A horse, who had been used to carry his rider into battle, felt himself growing old, and chose to work in a mill instead. He now no longer found himself stepping out proudly to the beating of the drums, but was compelled to slave away all day grinding the corn. Bewailing his hard lot, he said one day to the miller, Ah, me! I was once a splendid war-horse, gaily caparisoned, and attended by a groom whose sole duty was to see to my wants. How different is my present condition! I wish I had never given up the battlefield for the mill. The miller replied with asperity, It's no use you regret in the past. Fortune has many ups and downs. You must take them as they come. The Grasshopper and the Owl An owl who lived in a hollow tree was in the habit of feeding by night and sleeping by day. But her slumbers were greatly disturbed by the chirping of a grasshopper who had taken up his abode in the branches. She begged him repeatedly to have some consideration for her comfort. But the grasshopper, if anything, only chirped the louder. At last the owl could stand it no longer, but determined to rid herself of the pest by means of a trick. Addressing herself to the grasshopper, she said in her pleasantest manner, As I cannot sleep for your song, which, believe me, it's as sweet as the notes of Apollo's lyre, I have a mind to taste some nectar, which Minerva gave me the other day. Won't you come in and join me? The grasshopper was flattered by the praise of his song, and his mouth too watered at the mention of the delicious drink. So he said he would be delighted. No sooner had he got inside the hollow where the owl was sitting than she pounced upon him and ate him up. The Grasshopper and the ants. One fine day in winter, some ants were busy drying their store of corn, which had got rather damp during a long spell of rain. Presently up came a grasshopper, and begged them to spare her a few grains. For, she said, I'm simply starving. The ants stopped work for a moment, though this was against their principles. May we ask, said they, what you were doing with yourself all last summer? Why didn't you collect a store of food for the winter? The fact is, replied the grasshopper, I was so busy singing that I hadn't the time. If you spent the summer singing, replied the ants, you can't do better than spend the winter dancing. And they chuckled, and went on with their work. THE FARMER AND THE VIPER One winter a farmer found a viper, frozen and numb with cold, and out of pity picked it up and placed it in his bosom. The viper was no sooner revived by the warmth than it turned upon its benefactor and inflicted a fatal bite upon him. And as the poor man lay dying, he cried, I have only got what I deserved for taking compassion on so villainous a creature. The moral of the story is that kindness is thrown away upon the evil. The Two Frogs 
Two frogs were neighbours. One lived in a marsh, where there was plenty of water, which frogs love. The other lived in a lane some distance away, where all the water to be had was that which lay in the ruts after rain. The marsh frog warned his friend and pressed him to come and live with him in the marsh, for he would find his quarters there far more comfortable, and what was still more important, more safe. But the other refused, saying that he could not bring himself to move from a place to which he had become accustomed. A few days afterwards a heavy wagon came down the lane, and he was crushed to death under the wheels. The Cobbler Turned Doctor A very unskilful cobbler, finding himself unable to make a living at his trade, gave up mending boots and took to doctoring instead. He gave out that he had the secret of a universal antidote against all poisons, and acquired no small reputation, thanks to his talent for puffing himself up. One day, however, he fell very ill, and the king of the country bethought him that he would test the value of his remedy. Calling, therefore, for a cup, he poured out a dose of the antidote, and, under pretense of mixing poison with it, added a little water, and commanded the cobbler to drink it. Terrified by the fear of being poisoned, the cobbler confessed that he knew nothing about medicine and that his antidote was worthless. Then the king summoned his subjects and addressed them as follows. What folly could be greater than yours? Here is the cobbler, to whom no one will send his boots to be mended, and yet you have not hesitated to entrust him with your lives. THE ASS, THE COCK, AND THE LION An ass and a cock were in a cattle pen together. Presently a lion, who had been starving for days, came along and was just about to fall upon the ass and make a meal of him, when the cock, rising to his full height and flapping his wings vigorously, uttered a tremendous crow. Now, if there is one thing that frightens a lion, it is the crowing of a cock and this one had no sooner heard the noise than he fled. The ass was mightily elated at this, and thought that, if the lion couldn't face a cock, he would be still less likely to stand up to an ass. So he ran out and pursued the lion. But when the two had got well out of sight and hearing of the cock, the lion suddenly turned upon the ass and ate him up. The moral of the story being that false confidence often leads to disaster. The Belly and the Members The members of the body once rebelled against the belly. You, they said to the belly, live in luxury and sloth and never do a stroke of work, while we not only have to do all the hard work there is to be done, but are actually your slaves and have to minister to all your wants. Now we will do so no longer, and you can shift for yourself in the future. They were as good as their word, and left the belly to starve. The result was just what might have been expected. The whole body soon began to fail, and the members and all shared in the general collapse. And then they saw too late how foolish they had been. The Bald Man and the Fly a fly settled on the head of a bald man and bit him. In his eagerness to kill it, the bald man hit himself a smart slap, but the fly escaped, and said to him in derision, You tried to kill me for just one little bite. What will you do to yourself now for the heavy smack you've just given yourself? Oh, for that blow I bear no grudge, he replied, for I never intended myself any harm. But as for you, you contemptible insect, who live by sucking human blood, I'd have borne a good deal more than that for the satisfaction of dashing the life out of you. The Ass and the Wolf An ass was feeding in a meadow, and, catching sight of his enemy the wolf in the distance, pretended to be very lame and hobbled painfully along. When the wolf came up, he asked the ass how he came to be so lame and the ass replied that in going through a hedge he had trodden on a thorn, and he begged the wolf to pull it out with his teeth. "'In case,' said the ass, "'when you eat me, it should stick in your throat and hurt you very much.' The wolf said he would, and told the ass to lift up his foot, and 
thing gave his whole mind to getting out the thorn. But the ass suddenly let out with his heels and fetched the wolf a fearful kick in the mouth, breaking all his teeth. And then he galloped off at full speed. As soon as he could speak, the wolf growled to himself, Ah, it serves me right. My father taught me to kill, and I ought to have stuck to that train instead of attempting to cure. The Monkey and the Camel At a gathering of all the beasts, the monkey gave an exhibition of dancing, and entertained the company vastly. There was great applause at the finish, which excited the envy of the camel, and made him desire to win the favour of the assembly by the same means. So he got up from his place and began dancing, but he cut such a ridiculous figure, as he plunged about and made such a grotesque exhibition of his ungainly person, that the beasts all fell upon him with ridicule and drove him away. THE SICK MAN AND THE DOCTOR A sick man received a visit from his doctor, who asked him how he was. "'Fairly well, doctor,' said he, "'but I find I sweat a great deal.' "'Ah,' said the doctor, "'that's a good sign.' On his next visit, he asked the same question, and his patient replied, "'I'm much as usual, but I've taken to having shivering fits, which leave me cold all over.' "'Ah,' said the doctor, that's a good sign, too. When he came the third time and inquired as before about his patient's health, the sick man said that he felt very feverish. A very good sign, said the doctor. You are doing very nicely indeed. Afterwards, a friend came to see the invalid, and on asking him how he did, received this reply. My dear friend, I'm dying of good signs. THE TRAVELERS AND THE PLANE TREE Two travellers were walking along a bare and dusty road in the heat of a summer's day. Coming presently to a plane tree, they joyfully turned aside to shelter from the burning rays of the sun in the deep shade of its spreading branches. As they rested looking up into the tree, one of them remarked to his companion, "'What a useless tree the plane is! It bears no fruit and is of no service to man at all!' plain tree interrupted him with indignation you ungrateful creature it cried you come and take shelter under me from the scorching sun and then in the very act of enjoying the cool shade of my foliage you abuse me and call me good for nothing the moral of the story is that many a service is met with ingratitude THE FLEA AND THE OX A flea once said to an ox, How comes it that a big strong fellow like you is content to serve mankind and do all of their hard work for them, while I, who am no bigger than you see, live on their bodies and drink my fill of their blood and never do a stroke for it all? To which the ox replied, mm, Men are very kind to me, and so I am grateful to them. They feed and house me very well, and every now and then they show their fondness for me by patting me on the head and neck. And they'd pat me too, said the flea, if I let them, but I take good care they don't, or there would be nothing left of me. End of section 11